work as in as possible. Uh, staying sharp as best you can. It's kind of hard to get up and down. You know, you don't want to do too much. But uh, this week is just about being smart in your preparation and your approach. But uh, always knowing that you know we could be playing the winner of Atlanta or Boston. So we'll see you tomorrow. A yeah, question you about your preparation. I know you did the mic and drill as a kid, but how much did you did you go to ball handling gurus too? No, that, I don't no, believe in ball handling gurus. So all the all those all the ball handling stuff you just learned on your own. Uh, my dad, dad just, your dad, yeah. yeah. I mean, he, the crazy part, I didn't do anything that was just out of the ordinary. I didn't really do two ball dribbling or oh, yeah? having to have one eye closed and throw the basketball, pick up the tennis ball, <laughs> throw it, <laughs> sprint. Uh, I just did a lot of just uh, imaginary stuff as a kid, just as cliche as it sounds, just being in my backyard alone and working on it. Mm -hmm ton of moves watching a lot of YouTube clips and picking up things like that from other great players. But you did, I, I've seen YouTubes of you doing the mic and drill, so you, you did that. Yeah, yeah, yeah George yeah. Mike, I mean the angles on the backboard. Absolutely, that's I'm what not, I'm that's not you finishing get. over top of anybody, so <laughs> yeah. you know, I gotta be good with the angles on the backboard. What, what was the longest you had to do it? That's this last question on that, but did you do, you said you did it, I saw a clip once where you said you did it till you kind of almost got dizzy looking at the lights. Well my dad, when I was, <laughs> it's crazy, when I was seven and eight years old, you know, we started doing it, and um, you know, first it's the overhand regular one, the regular micro drill, and they made me do reverse. Mm -hmm. And I remember my nose started bleeding when I was in the backyard, and I just got so dizzy that I <laughs> passed out as a little kid. And I just, you know, things like that that I've still kind of kept in my mind, and I still do today as, as a grown up is, is awesome. So just thank you for my dad. Hey, Kyrie, um, with what's going on in the West? I mean, what happened with Steph? What happened with Chris Paul? Yeah. And, like, do you take that in with any kind of empathy because you basically personally went through the exact same thing, or just how, oh, yeah, how do you react sure. to that? For sure, for sure, one hundred percent. You know, I'm watching TV and I'm seeing CP come out, and you could obviously tell he's really frustrated. And you know, Steph goes down and in a freakish play that you know could have happened to anyone, but you know, he's already coming back from the, the ankle sprain, and then he comes out and sprains his MCL, and that's just it. Just it sucks. It absolutely sucks, but. To be out for the series or be out for a number of weeks, especially at the highest level of intensity of basketball that we played, you know, basically our whole entire lives. This is what it all boils down to the regular season. Um, definitely, you got to empathize with those guys. Um, at the end of the day, you know, they still have other guys in that locker room that have to pick up um, the pieces and they have to figure it out. Just part of the playoffs. I mean, you, know, you played well in the regular season, obviously, but do you feel like you've stepped it up here in the playoffs? And if so, what have you done to make that happen? Well, it's only, it's only been four games in the playoffs. Obviously, it's been high intense. It's a different level, different preparation, but um, you know, just the sharpness of the playoffs, uh, the intensity is something I live for, and, and playing high-level games is something I've been kind of accustomed to my whole entire life, of bringing it to the next level of, you know, whenever we're playing, and you know, whether it be a high-level game anywhere at any time, best players on the floor, that's the type of environment you want to be a part of. So I kind of knew, gearing up towards the end of the season, where I needed to be, and. Um, I still have to, you know, continue to uh, continue that path of just coming in, preparing, 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 and getting a ton of work in. Kyrie, considering all those injuries you talked about, how how good do you guys feel that you came out of a pretty tough first round series intact? I mean, that's what it's about. It's, you know, it's a lot of luck. Uh, you know, guys just doing work in, in the weight room, staying ready every single game, and doing whatever is possible. So. If something does happen, you have a clear conscience. You know, you, you could look yourself in the mirror and said you, you did everything possible to, to to be as healthy as you could be for that time, that time, and that game, and living in that moment. That's the only thing that matters now. If something happens, I mean, it just happens. But I mean, for us, it's just continuing to maintain our work in the weight room and on the court. The ball seemed to stick a little uh, for you guys in the late in the fourth quarter Sunday, and, and today Ty mentioned that he actually told you guys to do that for you to kind of dominate it or LeBron because of the defense that, that you're seeing. Yeah. Um, does that, ha having to go back that way um, and, and play uh, that, that kind of ball, are, are you at all concerned that it'll kind of stint the growth that you guys have had in terms of ball movement the way you have been? What do you mean? Like going back to what? For the last two years, at times, you guys have struggled uh, to move the ball, especially late in games. And then in this series, and towards the end of the regular season, you were moving all the way towards game four, it stops. Are you at all concerned that you'll have trouble getting the move? No. no. Why would, I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, we, we had two of the best closers in the game playing on one team. So, I mean, you have a 6 8 monster that could penetrate and get anywhere he wants on the floor. and then. Myself having that confidence in, in those situations, I mean, 
regardless of who the play is drawn up for, that's up to T. Lou. But, I mean, we're just following what Coach Lou wants to do. He wants the ball in you and Bron Sands at the end of the game. And I think that's where it should be. And if we play, if we have a play that's designed for someone else, then, you know, we do everything possible to execute. But at the end of the game, I mean, we should be, the ball should be in the, the two best players' hands. Hey, Kerry, when you've been conditioning your body and your mind for months to play, 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 and you get a break like this, is it a challenge then to, to ramp back up? Uh, I wouldn't say it's a challenge. Uh, it's just, it's, uh, you know, you you wish that you can almost play almost every other day in the playoffs. But, I mean, it's the best again, the best of seven series, which makes it special. So, you know, you see Atlanta, Boston, two, you know, two, two tied, and they go into game five, which is a pivotal game. And then, you know, we're, we're kind of stuck here for, for six days or five days or whatever the case may be of just kind of beating each other up a little bit. And um, we just got to be patient. That's all I said. It's just got to be smart about our approach going, going in these next few days. Hey, Kyrie, sure. uh, do you feel like the playoff running can help building the team chemistry and get everybody get close? Uh, no, I mean, I feel like our chemistry was great going into it. Going to, into it. Um, <laughs> you know, we, we kind of understood what we expected from one another and what, what game to game, what we needed from one another. We look at the matchups. Uh, first round, it was Reggie Jackson for you as the point guard. The second round is going to be either Isaiah or, or Schroeder and, and T. Mm -hmm. um, what's that added dynamic like for you as, as you prep for round by round, knowing that your individual matchup will involve you know some of the best players in the league? Oh, that's fine. It's fine. I look forward to it. Absolutely. I mean, uh, it's it's part of the game and part of what makes the playoffs special is specific matchups, and you know those are you know they're going at it right now. So <laughs> we'll see who. Who comes out the, the winner on that uh, in that series? Kerry, going back to the chemistry thing, uh, Ty said that he feels that this is the closest you guys have been as a team, maybe all year, or maybe since the time you've been together. Would you agree with that assessment? Uh, I would say that just uh, where we are mentally, um, and also physically, it helps a lot. But mentally, where we are, I mean, there, there's there's no drop off from from any from guy one to fifteen, and. Uh, you know, when you have myself, who's five years in, and I happen to be the youngest on the team, and you know that that's as far as it goes. That's it. So, we have guys that have played in playoff series before, guys that have been on different teams, guys that have been kind of all over the place, and have been in tough playoff series against great players and tough teams. So, um, when you have that combination and, and you add that value of character, um, you know the chemistry has has gotten a lot better. And it's, I think T. Lou's statement holds holds truth.